So when I was thinking of videos to do for the beginning of the year, I wanted to make one celebrating video game soundtracks. The music of games is often a little too underappreciated, as the composers and musicians help set the tone of the game and enhance the mood of a level or a moment. I was originally just going to talk about some of my favorite video game soundtracks, but unfortunately, I was having a lot of problems writing a script for it. Then, I remembered a video by my buddy Strain42, whose videos you should definitely watch by the way, where he took on a 30 day video game music challenge. This went around Twitter a few years ago, as everyone shared their daily picks of songs from their favorite games. It's something I've always wanted to do, but never had the time. Until now. Now some of you might be saying that this fad died out two years ago and I'm super late to it, and to that I say, you're right, but also screw you, it's my channel, I can do what I want, so welcome to Cloud Connection belatedly takes the 30 day video game challenge. Although actually, I'm going to be doing two different challenges today, as not only am I taking on the original challenge, and I wish I could credit the original author but I can't find them, but also the Lost Challenges extension sheet by Goobergolf. So that's 48 songs to pick, and I'm only picking one song per game series. I'm also disallowing licensed songs, so that means I have to discard music from series like Hotline Miami and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, which do have excellent soundtracks, but, you know, that'd be unfair. Anyway, let's start the challenge. Day 1, Title Screen Music. Already cheating a bit with this one since this is actually the opening credits theme, but I couldn't not pick the theme of Solid Snake from Metal Gear 2 for this day, a theme I first heard in Smash Bros. Brawl and fell in love with. This soundtrack's really cool and underappreciated on the whole, and this first song delivers a great first impression. It's got such a nice groove to it that really gets you in the mood to sneak around. I really recommend you listen to the whole soundtrack, because it's got plenty of 8-bit goodness, and this is an excellent highlight. Day 2, Opening Level Music we're moving on to a game I played quite a bit as a child, even though I absolutely sucked at it, MechWarrior 2. There's two campaigns in this game, the Clan Wolf and the Clan Jade Falcon story, and the former begins with the mission Pyrolite. MechWarrior 2's soundtrack features a collection of 90s electronic tunes, and this song makes for a great backing track for the introduction. It's not as hard hitting as the other songs, but it established a tranquil yet immersive atmosphere that's an excellent companion to blasting enemy mechs. Day 3, 8-Bit Music. For this one, I chose a game I really loved when I played it and then promptly forgot about until recently, V. And yes, that's apparently how you're supposed to pronounce it. One of the highlights from the first wave of retro indie platformers, V is a simple yet challenging little game that gets the most out of its minimal mechanics. And it's got a fantastic soundtrack. I could really pick any song from the list, but I'm going with Pushing Onwards, a kick-ass track that builds tremendously over a really catchy beat. Day 4, music from a console exclusive series. I'm assuming this category includes handhelds as consoles, and really, I just needed an excuse to put a Banjo-Kazooie song in here. I've already expressed my love for the Banjo series too many times to count on this channel, so I'm going to keep this introduction short and just lead into Spiral Mountain, a wonderfully bright and cheery tune that begins the game proper. Day 5, Hub World Slash Overworld Music. From one Rareware N64 collectathon to another, Donkey Kong 64 might not be everyone's favorite, but I think everyone can agree that the DK Isle theme is fantastic. It's such a calming and pleasing melody that fits the island setting perfectly. The instrumentation is also perfect, starting out with a moderate orchestra that builds towards a swelling bridge and ends in a relaxing finale before looping back to the beginning. No matter how many times I play this game, I never get sick of hearing this cozy little song.
Day 6, music that makes you feel relaxed. The Skyrim soundtrack hits a lot of different beats, with plenty of blood pumping battle themes, mysterious exploration themes, and mood setting town themes. The latter might be my favorite, as they tie into an emotional center that feels so homey and familiar, despite the fantasy setting. The Streets of Whiterun is my personal favorite, not just because it's a very soothing track, but also because the melody and tone of the instruments all melt beautifully together. Truly a remarkable sound. Day 7, music from an indie game. Let's talk about another early 2010s indie platformer, Limbo, a wonderful little gem that's dark in more ways than one. Obviously the art emphasizes shadows and darkness, but with the moody lighting, grainy visuals, and pertinent to our video today, ambient soundtrack, it creates a brutally somber atmosphere. One of my favorite sections of the game is the abandoned city, thanks not only to the level design, but the music that accompanies it. A soft chord accented by cracking electricity and sharp horn-like synths that give it an edge. Day 8, music from a shooter, first or third person. Whenever I think of shooters, my mind immediately goes to Half-Life, and for this pick, I'm going with one of my favorite scenes from the games, climbing underneath the bridge in the Highway 17 chapter of Half-Life 2. It's a memorable section, as you're climbing on top of scaffolding with nothing but deadly waters beneath you, with combined soldiers and headcrabs threatening to stop you. But the music that plays here, Lab Practicum, is a quiet piece which hits home the impact of the journey so far. This is roughly the halfway point of the game, and the song makes you reflect on everything that's occurred. A wonderful accompaniment. Day 9, music from a licensed game. Here's a game I probably should cover at some point, Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Spongebob was a massive part of my childhood, and while Battle for Bikini Bottom really isn't anything groundbreaking, it's a fun little adventure that has some pretty sweet music. For this challenge, I'm choosing the Goo Lagoon theme, which is a solid little surf rock tune. It's a little more action-packed than what you've heard in the game so far, appropriate as this is when the game starts to get a little bit more challenging. Day 10, RPG Battle Music. There are a lot of great RPG battle themes out there, some of which I couldn't pick for this day because I'm using another song somewhere else on this list. But I'm going with the battle theme from the original Paper Mario, which might still be my favorite in the series. Origami Kings came very close, but this is such a catchy little song that I couldn't help but pick it. It's not the most energetic battle theme out there, and if we're talking best RPG battle music, this wouldn't top the list, but this song enters my head so often that I felt the need to honor it here. Day 11, Puzzle Game Music. Although calling it a puzzle game is kinda misleading, Myst does have plenty of puzzles, so I guess it counts. In any case, this is a series I really want to talk about on this channel someday, because despite its old school design, there's still something so magical about these titles that appeals to me. But for this challenge, I'm selecting Atrus's theme from Riven, yet another piece that I find very relaxing. It's the first song you hear in the game, and the last one if you get a good ending, and it's a lovely wraparound for the mystical journey through the Age of Riven. Day 
Day 12, Music That Makes You Sad A lot of other songs I've picked for this challenge also make me sad, admittedly, but there's something about the safe room theme from Resident Evil 7 that just hits that mood so well. All the save room themes from the Resident Evil series are meant to calm you down and give you a moment of peace. With RE7, you get that, but there's also an unsettling nature to this track that, at least to me, feels very melancholy. Alongside Resident Evil 4's save room theme, which was very close to taking this slot, the RE7 track both soothes my soul and makes me feel a bit down, in a good way. Day 13, music you like from a game you don't like. It's not exactly a bold statement to say that I don't like Final Fantasy XIII, as its combat and characters just don't appeal to me in the slightest. Nonetheless, it does have some pretty solid music, including my pick for Day 13, Blinded by Light, the battle theme. A lot of people know this track, and a lot of people love it, myself included. It's dramatic and builds up tremendously, with an orchestral rock combo that swells into a magnificent chorus section that I absolutely love, and it makes these tedious battles just a bit more tolerable. Day 14, music featuring vocals. Finally, I get to talk about Hades on my channel, even if just briefly. I've been meaning to cover this game since I first played it, as I didn't pick it up in time to put it on my best games of 2020 list, even though it has now usurped Ghost of Tsushima as my favorite game from that year. There's a few songs with vocals in Hades, but I'm choosing Good Riddance, specifically the duet version by Darren Korb and Ashley Barrett. It's such a quaint and beautiful song, and even though you hear the first lines often throughout the game, I never get sick of listening to it. Day 15, Boss Battle Music. Even though I like it far less than its predecessor, I can't deny that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has some great tracks on the soundtrack. In fact, I actually think the boss battle theme, Incoming, trumps Xenoblade 1's boss theme by a long mile because while I've never cared for an obstacle in our path, this one absolutely knocks it out of the park. It's fast and hard hitting, a blazing metal song with string accompaniment that accentuates the intense feeling. And as a long-time metalhead, it's naturally going to hit a lot of good notes for me personally. Day 16, 16-bit 16 music. Confession time, I've never played Chrono Trigger and don't know a ton of the songs from its soundtrack. But I do know Corridors of Time, and yes, I did first listen to it from that one video that got taken down, and yes, I know I need to play the game already. Anyway, this is another song that I think a lot of people have heard before, even if they haven't played the game, and it's no wonder, thanks to its lovely harmonies and vibes. It's got an otherworldly, fantastical vibe that's full of mysticism and wonder, and it's a track that always takes me away to somewhere beautiful whenever I hear it. Day 17, music you never get tired of. Well, admittedly, almost any other song I've picked for this video I never get tired of. In fact, I almost finished my thoughts on Corridors of Time with It's a Song I Never Get Tired Of until I realized what day was next. Anyway, I'm picking the aquatic bass theme from Sonic 06, and no, this isn't me saying I like Sonic 06 because I don't, I just really love its soundtrack. I honestly can't pick between either aquatic bass theme since they're both incredible, with a wonderful electronic sound fused with solid guitar work and drums that hammer home that underwater impact. Day 18, 
Day 18, music in a game released the year you were born. That year is 1996 for the record, and I've chosen Quake as my game for this day. It's almost unfair to talk about Quake's music because any game with Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails doing the soundtrack is going to win out over so many others. Still, it's my list and I can do what I want, so I'm choosing the song Falling. It's a dark ambient piece that's mostly just a single chord accented by percussion and effects, and even with that, it still captures a kind of horror and unease that's unparalleled. Quake's all about that dingy, rusty, not-in-your-face aesthetic, and this song fits that to a T. Day 19, cover of music by a different artist. I'm not exactly sure if this means a cover by an artist outside of the game itself or not, but I'm erring on the side of a remix of a track inside the game where that song came from. Which means I'm going with Reflection, Center of the Earth mix from Celeste, remixed by Jukio Kalio from a track originally by Lena Rain. A lot of the B-side tracks from Celeste are awesome, but this one adds a more ethereal and classical style, with more distinct percussion, choir, and guitar setting the music apart in a chapter that's all about looking back. A marvelous twist if I'm being frank. Day 20, music from a racing game. I love Excite Truck. It's one of the first Wii games I ever played, and while I typically don't care for more realistic racing games, aka not kart racers, this one holds a big place in my heart. Part of it has to be the hard rock soundtrack. I grew up listening to a lot of rock like this, and naturally, hearing it in games as a kid was always awesome for me. The song that plays during the results screen is probably my favorite, especially since me and my brother watch the replays a lot, pointing out crashes and fun tricks we did. That kind of memory engraves a track like this in your head. Day 21, music you associate with frustration. One of the few games we had for our Nintendo Entertainment System growing up was Castlevania III Dracula's Curse. Of course, I could never beat the game thanks to its very harsh difficulty, and yeah, it was frustrating to play, but one thing about it that I've always loved is, you guessed it, the music. Clockwork, which plays in the Clock Tower stage, stands out because for the second level of the game, it's incredible how much the difficulty ramps up here. I've since come to like the Famicom version of the soundtrack more, but either way, this is a great song. Day 22, Town Slash Village Music. I've got a lot of nostalgia for the Hoenn region of Pokemon, partially because of its great soundtrack. There's plenty of towns to visit in these games, but for my money, you can't beat the very first one, Little Root Town. It's such a gentle and whimsical little melody that just makes you feel at home. Like a lot of Pokemon games, the early tracks have a lighter feel to them that ease you into the adventure, and Little Root Town adds that comforting, familiar spirit that feels so warm and embracing. Day 23, Underrated Music. You know what games I never hear anybody talk about? The Game & Watch Gallery series. On one hand, I understand, as they're just compilations of Game & Watch titles with Mario characters and updated graphics at their core. But even with the simplicity of these games, I think they deserve more attention, which is why I'm nominating Fire Attack from Game & Watch Gallery 4 as my pick for Underrated Music. It's an absolutely fantastic song, which I loved so much that I actually used it as my end card music for a few months back in 2019, and I'm curious if any of you remember that. Day 24, 
Day 24, music you constantly have stuck in your head. I've never played the game, but I've been listening to the Silent Hill 2 soundtrack a lot recently. For a horror game, the soundtrack captures a lot of different moods and sounds in it, as you've got your horror drones and atmospheres, but also a couple of more ambient and dreamlike songs as well. And thanks primarily to me putting on a one hour loop of it not too long ago, I've got the song A World of Madness stuck in my head right now. It's a great track on its own, but the repetitive yet not completely synchronized nature of the music makes it stick out a lot in my mind. Day 25, music that gets you pumped. I can't really think of any music that gets me more pumped than the music of Doom 2016. Side note, it's incredibly disrespectful how Mick Gordon's been treated by Bethesda for his work on the sequel, but I want to take this time to focus on his talent rather than how the soundtrack came out. Anyway, I'm choosing the old classic Rip and Tear as a heart-pumping song to accompany slaughtering demons on Mars and elsewhere. Combining the best and most aggressive aspects of metal and electronica, it provides a perfect backdrop as you, well, rip and tear through enemy onslaughts. Day 26, music you like from a game you haven't played. I've never played any of the Fate visual novels or spin-off games, and I don't exactly have any intention to. I've seen a few of the shows thanks to my brother, and while I enjoy watching them, I don't exactly care about the lore enough to want to really explore the series myself. However, another Fate-related thing my brother's introduced me to is the soundtrack to Fate Extra, and there's some great stuff on there. I'm choosing Battle 2 for this challenge because it's got that funky bass and guitar that makes for a pretty sweet tune. Day 27, music from a handheld game. Yet another series I really need to talk about, the Professor Layton series is a really charming and deceptively cozy one. You get sucked into the classical aesthetic and comforting atmosphere, and then the game dazzles you with mystery and spectacle. And you've got the theme for the whole series, Professor Layton's theme, a lovely song that I can't get enough of. Thanks to the instrument choices, it's familiar, yet still mysterious and alluring, inviting you in to see what the rest of the game has in store for you. Day 28, music that makes you nostalgic. Not many other pieces of video game music make me more nostalgic than the title theme to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. You likely already know that I hold this game very dear to my heart, and right from the moment I first saw Link riding across Hyrule Field as a kid, I knew I was playing something truly special. Hearing it now just takes me back to simpler times, when games were a major escape from everything. And I guess they still are, but still, I can't help but feel tons of nostalgia whenever I hear this one. Day 29, Final Boss Music. I knew I was going to select something from Undertale for this challenge, and I decided to pick the final boss theme from the pacifist route, Hopes and Dreams. Not only is the reveal of the boss well done, but the music that accompanies the fight is incredible. I know everyone gushes about Megalovania, and rightfully so, but since this song is tied much more to the emotional core of Undertale, I think it's overall the better track. While it's far from the biggest challenge in the game, it's an excellent culmination to the pacifist route that's both invigorating and heartfelt at the same time. Day 30, 
Day 30, Credits Music. I was relatively late to the Ace Attorney series, only playing the games in the past few years. But I still fell in love with its quirky characters, plot twists, and mysteries, and of course, the music. But I'm highlighting the credits music, obviously, which is such a phenomenal way to end the main game. You've just dealt with one of the most intense and emotionally grueling cases in the series, at least for me, and hearing this as everything winds down is such a great feeling. Alright, that's all 30 days of the main challenge done, so let's move on to the 18 Lost Challenges. Lost Day 1, Main Menu Screen Music, Slash Game Select. I've had a copy of Metroid Prime for as long as I can remember, but never fully played it until years later since I simply couldn't get into it growing up. Once I was in my young adult years, I did finally give it a shot, and damn, I was missing out. Of course, thanks to Smash Brothers and other sources, I was familiar with some of the songs from the game already, including the main menu theme. With its sci-fi percussion and synths mixed with that awesome choir, it sets you up for the adventure ahead while giving you a taste of the tone you should expect for what's to come. <laughs> Lost Day 2, Multiplayer Game Music. When I think of multiplayer games, my mind invariably turns to Kirby Air Ride. My brother and I played this game a ton growing up, and our favorite part by far was City Trial. That's not a surprising statement if you also played this game as a kid, but it was an incredibly fun game mode that just so happens to have an amazing soundtrack. I always loved hearing all the layered instruments and sounds playing in this very memorable tune. Lost Day 3, music from a minigame within a video game. There's quite a few minigames in Super Monkey Ball 2, many of which have some really awesome songs. But my favorite, at least as far as the soundtrack goes, has always been Monkey Target 2, which is just a sublime track that immediately caught my ear as a kid. It's very light and airy while still giving you some pep with the drum track. The chords in the background highlight the calming synths of the main melody, and it's a perfect song for flying in the air and carefully lining up your monkey balls. Not something I'd ever thought I'd write and say, but there you are. Lost Day 4, music that you would stay awake until 5am to play. I don't understand if this question is referring to staying up to play the game or play the music, but either way, I try not to do this anymore as an adult. The last game I can remember staying up through the night to play was Portal 2, and even if I didn't stay up till 5am exactly, I just want to talk about the soundtrack, dammit. I'm choosing comedy equals tragedy plus time since it encapsulates everything I love about this music, harsh, dissonant electronic and mechanical sounds layered on top of each other that feel futuristic and robotic and yet still incredible to listen to. Lost Day 5, Strategy Game Music. Typically, I'm not crazy about strategy games, but there are some exceptions like FTL Faster Than Light. One of the big reasons why is the soundtrack, which is a nice collection of nostalgic electronica songs that fluctuate between calmer exploration themes and powerful battle themes depending on your current situation. The Explore variant of Civil is my pick, as it's such a simple yet enchanting melody that makes for a great respite when things are nice and calm. It's so peaceful and easy on the ears that you almost forget just how much danger could lurk around every corner. Lost Day 
Lost Day 6, music from a cutscene within a video game. I've been very cautious in my excitement for The Wolf Among Us 2, but seeing the hype for it has made me think about the original game a lot. That game's such a masterpiece when it comes to atmosphere and subtlety, and you get that right from the introductory cutscene and the accompanying song, Fable Town. With a mixture of occasional mandolin plucks and swelling synth chords, it establishes the dark urban fantasy vibes right away. You're not quite sure what to expect from what's to come, but just from the first cutscene, you know it's gonna be something special. Lost Day 7, music from a virtual game, we connect, etc. Interesting category because I didn't realize there was such a thing as a non-virtual video game. Anyway, if this category is about games designed around hardware, then I guess I'll go with the main theme from Wii Sports because, well, I don't know what else I'd pick. Not to speak badly on the song, as it is a very good one, simple in its construction, but still a great way to get you invested in the sports to come. Like a lot of the music in Wii Sports, it's intentionally non-intrusive so as to let the action take center stage, yet this song still gets stuck in your head from time to time. Lost Day 8, Horror Game Music I don't know if I should consider The Binding of Isaac to be horror exactly, as while it isn't scary, there's plenty of horrific stuff in the aesthetics to warrant that label. However you feel on that, I absolutely had to talk about the soundtrack to Rebirth somewhere on this challenge. I'm going with the boss theme Crusade, which is a simultaneously hopeful and distressing track. Hopeful because it makes you feel courageous enough to beat the boss you're facing, but distressing in that it also makes you worry if you're going to make it out of this run alive. Lost Day 9, Underground Theme Music There's lots of underground bunkers to explore in the Fallout series, including the headquarters of the Brotherhood of Steel in the first game. The soundtrack to that location, Metallic Monks, is a remarkable song that blends atmospheric sounds with mournful synths and a military drum cadence. Combining a sad, quasi-patriotic tone with effects like electrical buzzing and an air raid siren sells the apocalyptic feel of the music, something familiar yet foreign in how destroyed it is and how removed it is from what we know as humans, a thoughtful and terrifying track. Lost Day 10, Fighting Game Music I don't play a lot of fighting games, with Super Smash Bros. being a notable exception, so I knew immediately what series to choose for this day's pick. I'm going with Menu 2 from Melee, and look, both menu themes from Melee are amazing, but I've always had the slightest inclination towards the second one myself. It's the more upbeat tone that does it for me, as while it may feel less dramatic, it still gets you excited for the next match. Melee soundtrack on the whole is incredible, and this song has always stood out to me among the rest of the music. Lost Day 11, Water Theme Music well, I couldn't really choose anything for this day but the mother of all water themes, Dire Dire Docks from Super Mario 64. I mean, most of you probably know this song by heart already, and like the game itself, I feel like there's little I could say about this song that hasn't already been said about it. So I'll just shut up so we can hear the emotional and beautiful hymns of this unbeatable track.
launched day 12, music from a game played in an arcade. I barely go to arcades these days, and usually I'm too busy taking in the sights and sounds to really focus on the music of what I'm playing. But when I was thinking of arcade game songs for this challenge, one tune did enter my head and subsequently refused to leave because of how much of an earworm it is, the theme to Bubble Bobble. This infectious little song is chirpy and cute, but I've never found it to be annoying, which it easily could be to some of you. And though Bubble Bobble itself isn't my arcade game of choice, it's definitely something I think of when I think of arcades. Lost Day 13, Sports Game Music. This was a tricky category for me since most of the sports games I play have fully licensed soundtracks, which would of course disqualify them. So I'm going with a pick from the Wii version of Punch-Out. Yes, that soundtrack is primarily remixes of the Punch-Out theme, but that song's awesome and the remixes are awesome too, so sue me. As for which one I'm choosing for this challenge, I really like the Glass Joe variant as the melody fits very well with a classic French jazz arrangement like this one. Lost Day 14, music from a game with a female protagonist. Let's talk about The Walking Dead. Oh, uh, spoilers for up through season two if you haven't played this yet. The music that plays when Kenny dies slash begs you to leave him at Wellington, at peace, has always been such a bittersweet song for me. Kenny is a very complicated character, and by this point in the series, you feel a lot for him and what he's gone through, but also understand why Clementine would feel reluctant to go with him or would be afraid of him. And this song makes deciding what Kenny's fate should be all the more heartbreaking. Lost Day 15, music from a game you attempted the speed run, played quickly, or were on the clock to survive. When I played Super Meat Boy for this channel, I managed to get A plus ranks for every single level except for one, and that meant a lot of speedrunning. Still, it was an enjoyable challenge thanks to the excellent soundtrack keeping me company. Any song from this game could really fit for this category, but I'm going with Hot Damned, the theme to Chapter 4. This is where the difficulty really starts to settle in for a lot of people, and with the heaviest piece of music in the game up to that point, it's easy to see why this chapter's theme is such a memorable one. Lost to Day 16, Final Level Music. I'm stretching the rules a bit for this one since this technically isn't the final level, but my pick is the King's Court from Cuphead. I know that the Devil Fight should count as the final level, but to be honest, I don't remember the music from that one, whereas the King Dice Fight has an incredible theme. Cuphead's soundtrack obviously received a lot of praise for its compositions and the retro style, and King Dice's battle theme is right up there at the top for me. It's a very memorable fight in general thanks to the miniboss gauntlet, and the song helps immensely in this regard. <laughs> Lost Day 17, Game Over Music. The Mass Effect trilogy has plenty of incredible songs in it, but one of the most distinct is Saren, which doubles as both the theme of the first game's main antagonist and the Game Over song. You immediately pick up on the sinister tone and dark plunking of the synth when Commander Shepard falls, and while you don't hear it for very long when you get a Game Over, that opening melody turns something in your stomach every time you hear it. I mean that in a good way, of course. Saren's theme is a great song that fills you with dread every time you hear it. Lost Day 18, 
Lost Day 18, Wild Card. Pick any video game music. Well, considering I couldn't fit in anywhere else in this challenge, I'm going to have to pick a song from Valhalla. I couldn't not choose a song from this game, as it's one of my favorites of all time, but which one was tough to decide. I went with You've Got Me, a wonderful song that plays when Jill drinks on the balcony with Dana. Not that the game is necessarily stressful, but this is a nice little break from everything that's been happening for the characters, and a chance for you to get to know Jill and her boss a little more. It's also, I think, a perfect song to end this selection on. And that's the 30, technically 48 day video game music challenge done and dusted. This was a ton of fun to do, honestly, even if I'm quite a bit late to the trend. Assembling my picks was a good time, and I'm pretty satisfied with what I chose. There's some series and songs I wish I could have included, but overall, I'm happy with my selections here. If you want to hear these songs in full, I've compiled a playlist with all the tracks I picked. The link to that is in the description. And I encourage you to give this challenge a shot if you haven't already. I've got links to the challenge images in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this, give the video a like, leave a comment, and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more stuff. Got some picks of your own for this challenge? Leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear what some of your favorite video game songs are. Until next time, this is Cloud Connections, signing off.